Azure Striker Gun Volt 2 On Armed Blue Gun Volt Soul is the sequel to the ultra popular platformer for the 3DS developed by Inti Creates, the makers of the Mega Man Zero and Zack series, as well as Mega Man 9 and 10. Now that Might No. 9 was a big disappointment, the Gun Volt series is the closest thing we have to a Mega Man successor. It doesn't have to be about robots, guys. Just like it doesn't have to be about vampires either. Gun Volt 2 has even more content than the previous installment, since we now have a second new playable character, Acula. Oh, I mean, Copan. He plays completely different from Gun Volt. He doesn't have electric powers or anything like that. His gameplay focuses more on shooting, and he has the ability to use multiple weapons. He can even steal weapons from the bosses he defeats. So he kinda plays like Mega Man. Kinda. He doesn't need to recharge his weapons, just like Zero. But if you use them for too long, this gauge will get empty. And similar to Gunvolt's EP gauge, Copain will be unable to use his weapons for a few seconds. He can also use Blitz Rush, which is a type of dash attack. It places a target lock on enemies, which gives a homing effect to his gunshots. He can also hover for a few seconds, and he is also able to do all sorts of flying maneuvers, thanks to his jetpack. Meanwhile, not much has changed about GV's gameplay, aside from the fact that he now has a stand, who is none other than Sian. Oh, I mean... Joel. Man, I really don't understand those names from the localization. One of the main themes in the game is the color blue, you know? Like Azur. So the female lead is Sian. It makes sense. Isn't that right, Aqua? Oh, I mean Azura. Anyway, Gunvolt is basically invincible now. I'm fucking invincible! Thanks to the powers that he got at the end of the first game. So just like in Metroid, it was necessary to nerf Hang at the intro stage. Which brings us to the main plot and the main villains. Eden, a terrorist organization of Espers, who wants to steal the Cyberdivas powers of Joel in order to create a utopia ruled by psychics. By using her mysterious abilities, the leader of Eden is able to separate the Cyberdiva powers from GV's body and turns them into mirror pieces. Joel's conscience is still inside GV's body, but since she lost most of her powers, she becomes really small, especially considering that she had a really nice body back then. Hey! Are you implying that GV is a lolicon? That's just wrong, okay, yeah, never mind. Copain's campaign revolves around his little sister, Michiru. Oh, sorry, I mean... Mitia, fuck it. Her surname is Kamizono. She's clearly Japanese. So I will just call her Michiru from now on. Which is also much easier to pronounce. Anyway, Michiru is being targeted by Espes from Eden, and for no reasons. But it might be connected to the Cyber Diva's powers. Copain is able to steal one of the mirror pieces from Eden, and his little robot assistant gets an unexpected reaction from it. In order to keep Michiru safe, he decides to fight against Eden and uncover the secret behind the mirror pieces. G7 are the strongest members of Eden, and each one of them protects a mirror piece, which means they are basically the robot masters in Gunvolt 2. There are four stages for each playable character. Three of those stages are exclusive to one of the characters while the fourth stage is the same for both GV and Copen. The final stage consists of three sections. At the end of every section, you get to fight against one of the bosses from the stages you didn't have access to. For example, Tesla gets her own stage during Copen's campaign, and it's a stage infested with hair. Figures. 
Fight GV only gets to fight her in the first section of the final stage. There are many differences between the two campaigns. For instance, GV has a pretty normal boss battle against us Rock. But when Copain is fighting against him, he first becomes a robot. And then he gets inside a bigger robot, which in turn combines with a giant robot. Yes, this, this is, is pretty, pretty awesome. awesome. On the other hand, Copain has a regular boss fight against the seal. But when GV fights him, he creates many copies of Jode that can only be erased by using GV's electric powers. The story is nothing poetic, it's not something profound, and it will not make you question the meaning of life. <laughs> Nevertheless, the story in Gunvolt 2 is fucking cool! For the lack of better words, the action scenes, combined with the awesome techno rock J pop soundtrack and the shonen manga art style, make for a very exciting adventure. <laughs> Characters will talk to you during stages and give you clues and some interesting plot points. <laughs> The action doesn't stop when they are talking, which means those conversations don't get in the way of the gameplay. The dialogue is also very well written, but if you don't feel like listening to it, you can just turn all the dialogue off before entering a stage. By doing so, it will feel just like an old school Mega Man game. The graphics look great on the 3DS screen. They have vivid colors, smooth animations, and are filled with details. However, since the 3DS doesn't support HD graphics, the game will look very pixelated when you watch it from a high-definition monitor. Naturally. Much like the first game, the character design is excellent, especially the bosses. They all have very distinct personalities and gimmicks, although a few of them can be kinda annoying. The game is fully voiced, except for Michiru, who is mute. How convenient! The voice acting is pretty good for most part, but Copain's voice actor falls a bit short at times. The level design is pretty decent, but you can notice that some stages were made with only GV in mind, because it feels like a walk in the park when you play those stages with Copen and his Rocket Knight abilities. Compared to most Mega Man games, Gunvolt 2 is very easy. GV and Copen have special shields that can defend against most attacks. You get completely healed every time you level up. And even if you die, there is a high chance that you will be resurrected by the Cyber Diva's powers. Which heals all your HP and makes your character much stronger. But even if you still manage to die somehow, this will not be a big deal. Because you have infinite lives and all the stages are filled with checkpoints. However, Gunvolt 2 can still get pretty difficult sometimes, especially in later stages. In general, Copen is the weakest of the two, but if you happen to own a Shovel Knight amiibo, you can get a special accessory from him that makes Copen even stronger than GV. Granted, you need to defeat Shovel Knight to get this accessory, and if you manage to defeat him, you deserve at least this much, because he's a beast. Gunvolt 2 goes for less than 2,000 yen on the Japanese eShop, but this game deserves even more. I really love Gunvolt 2. It's not for nothing that the first one sold so many copies, and this sequel do justice to the franchise. I have no big complaints about it, and I hope this game gets many sequels in the future. Unfortunately, 
this doesn't seem very likely. We can only hope. But for now, we have this amazing sequel to play. Thank you very much, Inti Creates. You can do no wrong. Except for Galga. That game is creepy. And that's it for this review. But if you got any questions about Gun Vault, just leave a comment. Thank you for watching. Bye!